ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kieran McCory. Hello, everyone. Um, you're all very welcome. Um, and of course, it's a pleasure for us to, uh, to be here today to talk about uh, traveling to the airport. Well, it's a bit of a fib, really. It's not just about being in an airport and, and travel. Uh, it's about something that's much bigger. Uh, it's about combining the power of big data and analytics and mobile technology and geolocational tracking to uh, enrich experiences for users. And also, on the other side of the coin, to provide really valuable business insights uh, to, uh, to potential collectors of that information. Um, we're very privileged and very lucky in, in our team that we get to uh, work with these technologies and weave different threads of technology together into uh, new innovative um, solutions. And this is what we're going to show you today. So it's really a bringing together of those different, uh, those different technologies into something that um, we think advances the state of the art in terms of what we see today for mobility and geolocation and, and analytics and indeed very importantly, the predictive side of, uh, of analytics. Um, I've got a few um, prerequisites to go through. There's some forward-looking statements in, in these slides uh, that um, I need to bring your attention to. Um, and you know, really what we're showing here is some technology that uh, we're, we're experimenting with. Right? We're, we're driving forward and we're innovating. Um, and indeed, some of the, uh, the content is also sensitive and confidential. So um, I'm just bringing that to your, uh, to your attention. Um, I wanted to start off with, uh, with the notion of trying to explore what it is that, uh, that travelers want, right? And a, a thought struck me the other day. Uh, before the TSA started offering the service for free, the pap down, um, I used to have a little pap time that I did some years ago when I went on a business trip or a, a, a personal trip. Um, pretty much as I left my house, I used to check various, oops, check various parts of my body. I'd check if I got my wallet. I'd check if I got my passport. I checked if I got my flight tickets, which I don't need to do anymore. And I, I pretty much the last thing was I check if I had my phone. And um, that's become really interesting because smartphones, but specifically smartphones, have become an integral part of the travel experience for lots of travelers and passengers today. Right? So there's a graphic there on the screen that gives you an indication that there's a real bias and a very heavy usage of smartphones connecting to airport Wi-Fi systems much more than any other device. And indeed, there is some intelligence and, and data uh, provided from the uh, airline um, operators over the last couple of years that show a huge increase in the amount of passengers and travelers engaging with a smartphone on some part of their traveling experience. In fact, last year, 83% of all travelers used a smartphone at some stage in the process from booking a flight to when they arrive at the destination. So uh, no longer should we be, consider, you know, be concerned with um, a number of other things like tickets or whatever, what we really want to be concerned with is how can we provide everything that travelers need uh, in a way that's easy for them to consume? Um, and by definition, from everything that we see and all the data that we have, travelers are using their smartphones or mobile devices more than, than anything else. But this is a trend which is not going to go away. Um, as you can imagine, there is a real bias to the use of smartphones from a, a demographic perspective to the millennials, right? So increasingly, millennial type people expect to have information provided to them um, in a way that, that, that they can consume it easily, right? So they want to have information provided to them generally instantaneously um, and on a device which everyone is familiar with. And it's typically some kind of smartphone or mobile device. Uh, that same research that I, I talked about yesterday, uh, sorry, I talked about earlier, which I came across yesterday, indicated that the number of face-to-face -face interactions between a traveler and um, people in an airport are on a significant decline. And 
corresponding to that, there's a significant increase of the use of mobile devices, particularly through smartphones, to provide access to information uh, just in time and just when it's, uh, when it's needed. Indeed, the data indicates that 39% um, of all airline passengers uh, last year used a smartphone for the um, a booking process. 79% of all airline passengers um, used uh, a smartphone for check-in. Uh, sorry, this is the growth figure. And a there was 110% growth. Sorry, my apologies. 110% growth in the use of smartphones for the present presentation of a boarding pass. So this notion of engaging with people and engaging with kiosks is going away in favor of presenting users with information in a very convenient and um, a, a very uh, desirable means for them. And, and looking at what travelers want, they want to have a number of things, right? They want their travel experience from the second or even before they arrive at the airport um, to be enriched in some way. They want it to be augmented. They want to get exactly the right information presented to them at exactly the right time. So even when they're land side and as they progress through their, their trip through an airport to get to the gate, as they move airside, as they navigate towards a gate or as they go through retail environments, they want to be presented with information that's very relevant um, and, and very useful to them to improve their experience. Right? That's what the, the focus is. So how can we go about doing this? And this really has been the subject of our work over the, the, the last while, which is building together these different discrete technologies into an exploration, I suppose, of how we can use these technologies to change the landscape, right? to change the state of the art. And increasingly, we're looking at using location technologies, um, so location-based services. It could be a combination of, of different things. It could be indoor navigation systems in an airport, for example. Um, it could be uh, Wi-Fi capability. Some of the new HP Wi-Fi uh, solutions have location-aware capability, and they can identify your location within a radius of, of two meters as you transit through an airport. Or it could be something um, a little bit uh, uh, less dynamic um, using something like this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's very, very small, but it's a, it's a BLE beacon, right? And in fact, later on in this presentation, we're going to show you a little demonstration of this type, using this type of technology to, uh, uh, to enrich the, the passenger's experience. But some of that, I suppose, is quite pedestrian in a way. Um, what becomes really interesting is how you can provide very, very relevant almost predictive information to an individual to make their experience even better, right? So understanding um, what their interests are, what their typical patterns and behaviors are, um, maybe some information about their, their um, shopping history, for example, um, you know, in terms of marketing opportunities, how can you engage with a customer better or engage with a traveler better to make their experience better. And in doing so, how can you convert that into something that's beneficial to the customer and indeed beneficial to the provider of, of that kind of service? So this is what we've been working on. And we've instantiated it um, through this uh, little application, uh, a prototype application more than anything else, although I'll talk a little bit more in a moment about how we're about to put this into practice um, in a pretty large uh, European um, airport. So we've been working on this smart traveler application or solution for, uh, for some time, which is focused on, on just aspects of what I've talked about already. So providing information to travelers, notifications, for example, um, about information about their flight or potentially delays or something like that, um, so that they're well apprised of, of, uh, uh, of, of what's happening and to take the pain out of the travel experience, make it simpler for individuals, and at the same time, reacting and responding to the environment that that um, user is in, right? So uh, in, uh, identifying maybe a user is in a particular part of an airport terminal at one stage uh, or at some stage, and, and how can we how can we provide them with some very relevant information that's going to allow them to get to the next stage in their journey um, or perhaps some, some marketing opportunities? So we've been working on this application and um, 
one of my colleagues will demonstrate it in, in just a few moments, and we've got some mock-ups here on the, the screen. Um, in doing so, you know, I talked about this being very focused on the passenger's journey um, and how it relates to improving their journey through an airport, but there's a very obvious um, retail application of this technology as well. So consider the example where um, a traveler, for example, is in a, an airport and positions him or herself in front of a particular shelf or something like that. Um, through the use of location-based technology, you can identify that the customer is there. Um, that notification can be sent to um, any number of different places. Maybe the retailer, retailer is interested in knowing that a previous customer of theirs, for example, is in the store. And how should you personalize or tailor the response or your interaction with that customer to, A, provide a better experience for them, and B, induce a higher likelihood of converting that interaction into some, um, uh, some revenue generating experience. And what we're going to show you is something relatively basic. But I think if you look at the landscape for where this can go to, there's a whole avenue of, of opportunities for how we can move it forward. Right. So it's not simply about presenting information to a user on their mobile device. That's what we've been exploring to date. Um, but also using other uh, wearable type technology, augmented reality technology. If you think about um, Google Glass, for example, and, and the way you will expect to see that evolve over time, uh, how you can tailor and customize the environment for a user to be very reflective of their, their context and, um, and, and what you can give to them to make their experience uh, much better. So with that, um, it's enough of me talking about the kind of high-level abstract uh, capability. I'd like to hand over to my colleague and my intrepid or intrepid traveler, um, Enda, um, who has just arrived at the airport, by the way. And as they say in pantomime, he's behind you. Thanks, Kieran. Um, yeah, so what we're going to demonstrate is we're just going to demonstrate this um, uh, application, which we've defined as a smart traveler. Uh, as a traveler, I'm just after arriving at McCarran Airport. It's not an airport I'm familiar with. Uh, and for a flight that I'm taking to Dublin, back, in, back to Ireland. Um, and as Kieran has said, you know, what I'm really looking for as a traveler, I'm looking for that improved traveling experience. Uh, it's it, it, an experience in terms of how I can get to my flight as quickly as possible, as seamless as possible, uh, you know, navigating through uh, security, looking at the shopping experience and how I can, I suppose, avail of any particular offers that, I, that, I, you know, that might be available. Uh, and, and really, I suppose, from a technology perspective, see how big data analytics can help drive and improve that experience in a context-aware manner. So as I arrive at the airport, I'm just going to open my Smart Traveler application. And as you can see, um, the beacon technology is after detecting that now I'm now in the airport. And it's, it's providing me information based on my details today. It knows that I have a flight from uh, Las Vegas to Dublin. It's providing me information as regarding the flight details, uh, the, the flight number and so forth, the time, and also a, a high level view of just some of the basic amenities that are actually at the airport. So what I'm going to do is, it, sorry, it also knows that I have checked in a bag, and it knows that I will want to go and to that check-in area to basically drop off my bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to start moving in the airport. And you'll see there's, with the direction I'm taking, we strategically place some beacons uh, here in, in, in the hall. And as I move to the beacon, this uh, the, this will donate basically the location that I'm actually traveling to or want to go to. So in this instance, I'm basically, sorry, this is just, apparently it's not moving. Sorry about this, it's not changing. It's 
not changing. Take time. It's connected. Believe it. It's not twitching. The reflector doesn't seem to be No, it is, it is. It's, it's there. Bear with us a second, Sorry. folks. It's on. Just talk through it. Just, just, walk, just walk through it. Sorry. Do, do you want to use the photos that we've stored as a backup? No, let me just try that again. It's, it's just not. It's moving on the device, that's what I'm saying. It's not yeah. the problem with the app. Can, we just try, the Can we try the reflector? No. Okay. Okay, sorry about this, folks. For some reason, it's not, um, it's not been reflected on the screen. Um, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to talk through and, and still, um, I suppose, walk through, if you like, the, the, the demo, and if you can bear with me. Um, as I said, once I get to the airport, the system will acknowledge and uh, understand that I've got a, a bag that I'm going to check in. It will direct me and navigate, providing me step-by-step step -step instructions in terms of how to get to that um, check-in area so I can drop my bag off, put it on the belt, and what it will do is it will, it will automatically provide me with the boarding pass that I can authenticate myself at the desk. That then will help generate a receipt for my luggage, which I can retain and use in case there's a problem uh, in terms of if anything is lost, uh, but also ver validates that I have checked in my luggage and I can provide as required when I get to my destination. Um, what I will do then is, um, I, I'd like to move to the gate through security and move to the gate as quickly as possible. So what, what I will be given is I'll step-by-step -step instructions uh, through the airport uh, and it will be a case of, uh, in this instance, uh, I'm going to get through security, I'm going to move towards um, the, through a number of shops and as you can imagine from a shopping perspective there are um, different I suppose preferences that we all have in terms of shopping. One of the, I suppose, innovative aspects and particularly, you know, big data today and context-aware solutions is that I can, based on my browsing history and based on, based on you know, um, information that I might be interested in, that if I provided my consent, I can be prompted and being, you know, given coupons, incentives to go and actually shop and, and go into different stores. And this again is where mobility and the uh, big data analytics has helped drive, is helping to drive, you know, both traveling and shopping experiences. So uh, the idea was that I was going to show here, this again do, would donate a shop where I was basically shopping for, you know, looking at uh, buying a, 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 like a bag for my wife back in Ireland. And when I was actually outside that store, again through, through you know, geolocation and context of where um, uh, the, uh, the, the solution we've built, that it would recognize that I'm actually there and would prompt me with a, a coupon to actually try and get me to come in and shop and, 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 and purchase that bag. Um, the, the, this is kind of one good example of you know, again, where big data and analytics has helped driving, how do we make data available and pertinent to me as a user? So it's very much around me as my persona. When I'm traveling, I don't want to have, get just, you know, receive a whole lot of information that's irrelevant. I wanted it specific to me as my user, me as a user, based on my preferences, based on my browser history, based on, you know, data and indicators that I've actually provided to those companies where I'm interested in their products. So again, that idea of using you know, big data. The other aspect of this, I suppose, is particularly the role of social media. 
And again, how in an airport, I can collaborate with people who actually might be at the airport that I, I, I know are, are in the same time zone and the same location as I am when I'm taking my flight. But I also can get information from them as regarding um, any instances that may happen, uh, whether it's to do with security or whether it's actually to do with, um, again, it might be your own shopping experiences and so forth. So um, the last you know, part of my journey is very much as I pass these shops, as well as looking at um, you know, providing prompts to those shops that it, it may be a case of where I'm interested in the goods and I might be able to send an alert to them so they know that I'm on the way. But I'm also, it's, all, it's also helping me navigate, my, uh, help navigate me to that shop. Um, as part of the traveling experience, I will also be kept updated with any changes in terms of the flight. And in this instance, um, and it happens to us as you can imagine, the flight has been delayed. So I'm updated as I'm going to the, um, as, I'm tra as I'm traveling to the gate. And again, I can be prompted with a coupon to go and basically shop, go to a restaurant, that in some way is some way to help compensate me for my delay. Once I get to the check-in desk, I would then be, uh, again, provided with an automatic boarding pass that I can basically provide. Oh, oh yeah, okay, sorry, you're right, Jim. It's barely, okay, you can barely see it. So the, board, the, boarding, the boarding pass, which I would then just provide to the agent, and then I can just board my flight. So as Kieran has said, I now don't have to bring all these documents. Uh, I don't have to look at bringing you know, three or four different devices. I don't have to connect to different applications. We've consolidated this all in the one application, really bringing the power of mobility, uh, big data, analytics, all in a really rich context aware experience. So I'm, apologies again for the demo, guys. Uh, it's more around how that was displayed rather than the application. So I'm going to hand over to Gary, who's just going to maybe complete our, our presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Ender. Good afternoon, everyone. The joys of emerging technology. So I want to cover uh, what travel providers want, specifically airports, because um, the concept of, of engaging directly with passengers is a lot less um, pervasive in airports as it is with airlines, of course. And um, the corollary on that one is, is what, how, how, how does airports deliver to what passengers want? So of course, unsurprisingly, what they want to do is increase revenue, improve profitability, and grow market share. And how do they do that? Well, they need to pull in additional passenger numbers. And to do this, they need to invest in innovative and differentiating business technology. So there's a couple of challenges here, is that in the emerging technology, in the, in the advanced economies, the passenger numbers are pretty much flatlined. So all airports and airlines, I guess, as well, are competing for the same passenger numbers. They have, uh, at the same time, a, a downward um, pressure on their aeronautical and as well as their non-aeronautical revenue, the revenue that comes from um, retail, food and beverage, et cetera, parking, et cetera. So there's been some interesting research being done that the lost revenue potential um, for airports is possibly in the region of the tens of billions compared to a total uh, airport revenue spend of about 100 billion, just over 100 billion uh, at the moment. So it's quite significant. So what they need to do is, is, is reverse this role and um, increase the revenue um, by delivering ancillary services to passengers in exchange for them sharing their information so you can send out personalized um, and uh, push notifications. So there's some other interesting um, facts is that an additional 10 minutes inside security will re uh, result in about a 30% reduction in retail spend. So um, Kieran alluded to this a little earlier. Uh, we're busy talking to a large European airport at the moment to, to um, develop a proof of concept around this technology. And they're very interested in, in a couple of things. One of them is, is the ability to move people through the airport, um, through security, 
into airside retail and to maximize the merchandising opportunities in that area. And then move them out to the gate um, to meet their on-time departure SLAs. But at the same time, and to do this, they wanted to, to develop Wayfinder uh, and flight change notification uh, notifications, and in return, send out push notifications to, to, known, to known users. Uh, the other aspect is to, to use um, proximity uh, mar marketing based on, on beacon technology. And uh, we're also talking about uh, HP location aware, what's called Cupid technology from HP Labs as well. But essentially, we're agnostic around the kinds of location technology you might want to use, whether it's standard Wi-Fi or, um, or GPS or Google location. So the, the kinds of data we're looking for here is, um, is information that helps airports deliver that improved customer experience. At the same time, to find, to understand the, the dwell time of passengers through the airport in terms of hot and cold areas, um, that helps them plan around retail um, stands um, and, and movement of passengers through the airport. So just to give you a sort of brief overview of, of the kinds of architecture, just from a very high level. Um, the core of it is a, is a, a real-time analytics engine um, based on HP Vertica, uh, using Hadoop as, the, as a data lake access level, um, as well as uh, autonomy or RASMA for unstructured data. As I mentioned before, we have a number of location services, whether it's um, based on, on, on BLE, iBeacon technology, um, or HP's location aware technology. Uh, but, but you know, essentially we are agnostic around the kinds of, of sensor network you want to put out there. And then, of course, the generation of these notifications to, the, to passengers um, in a very intelligent and informative user interface. So one of the, the airlines being talking to in Europe, um, a, a large, a low-cost carrier, has a major issue. Whenever there's a, 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 a um, irregular operation, a um, delay on their flights, they have thousands. In fact, recently during the Air France, I mean, the, the French air traffic controller strike, I think with, at one time there was about 45,000 passengers stranded. Um, and what they needed to do was to send out automatic delay vouchers um, to prevent people from queuing up in front of customer service agents. So we're talking to them about integrating an irregular operations uh, scenario with the, the airport operations um, system and shelling those, those vouchers, e-vouchers, through the smart traveler um, service. So just, in, uh, just a final couple of words around the, the benefits. Um, in this value exchange between the passengers and, and the airports. And of course, this could be airlines, could be rail operators, hotels, events, et cetera, as well. Essentially, it's a, it's a, it's a value exchange where we, uh, we, you know, we find that we will share this information with, our, with someone like an airport who may be an enabler um, in exchange for them um, providing us with, with uh, assistance uh, on our journey. So uh, please feel free to come and talk to Ender, Kieran, and myself um, after the, the session. And I uh, thank you for your time, and um, thanks for listening.